Hello YouTube, Millennium X17 here, and I don't know about you, but I'm having a pretty good day. It's kind of shocking, really, considering all that's happened over this past weekend. You know, I work on the weekends, so I actually had a great weekend at work. Uh, it's kind of shocking, though, given, you know, how my weekend started, but either which way. My video that I put up Sunday afternoon, uh, if you didn't see it, that wouldn't surprise me, you know, it's no shock or revelation that I'm a small YouTuber at all, you know, very small fish. It's, uh, it's going to be swept under the rug, as probably will this video. It's nothing, uh, it's no great revelation to me. But the reason why I bring it up is though, uh, you're going to want to watch it because it pertains heavily to the subject matter that I'm going to be talking about in this video. Links, as always, are in the description especially of this video because there are a lot of links to go along with this stuff. I'm not just making things up. But either which way, my Bentley GT3 vid, it went a bit long. I did have to cut it down and tighten it up, but I did forget some stuff, but it wasn't important enough really to, you know, make its own an independent video of. But either which way, you know, I like things like could I have said something different myself to Ian Bell, you know? Perhaps, maybe, I could have gone another round and asked another question or two, but ultimately, who's the paying customer, you know? And furthermore, I had the respect to tell him to his face that due to decisions that he and as well as his team are making, that I'm not going to be supporting his game financially anymore. I'm not going to be one of those, you know, kind of haters or trolls that's going to kiss his ass and kiss the game's ass and then run off to another corner of the internet and whine about it behind his back. No, I gave him the respect that he didn't give to me in return. So, you know, there's that. And then also, furthermore, I looked at it and uh, he actually, uh, Mr. Bell then went and closed the forum and buried that topic about three pages deep on their forum. Uh, yeah interesting attitude to approach the situation with that forum in question is now about eh, five six pages deep on their forum if you want to look at it link in the description i still have that but either which way all of sunday night i was thinking about letting it go and just bringing out my expensive ghetto wheel setup out again and just you know what let's just let all the internet nonsense go and just continue playing more project cars and just, you know, continuing with the GT3. I'm sitting on a McLaren contract for both GT3 and GT Endurance. So I could just go with it and don't have to worry about it. I checked my Twitter feed Monday afternoon to find out that Project Cars 2 has been announced? Really? Now, I'm not quite sure how to feel about this. You know, you look at the stats of what they're aiming to be. It's going to have about double the tracks, double the cars... Rally cross and hill climb, there's going to be co-op career, so on and so on and so forth. It's also crowdfunded. You can donate anywhere from 50 to 10,000 pounds. And this is where I'm thinking a lot of people are having their issues. See, crowdfunding is new. Uh, it's very much in its infancy, and there's going to be a lot of hiccups as it finds its place in the gaming industry. It's still so new that... You know, it's almost on a project-by-project project basis as to who's going to be doing it right and not. And just with this, this one here, though, feels a little off. Because after the first game was crowdfunded and the first game then went on to sell an additional million copies, you're now expecting people to pour even more money onto you? Now, don't get me wrong, I don't have a problem with a sequel. The way that the entire situation is being handled with the first game and, well, of course, my little run-in with a certain studio head just kind of jaded my opinion on the whole situation a little bit. See, Slightly Mad Studios, or probably more importantly, Ian Bell, is showing little to no concern with fixing the original game. I would imagine that there are people at Slightly Mad Studios that do legitimately want to make the original project car is really good, but a quick perusal across their forum shows that I'm not the only one getting banned. It seems that Ian Bell and a lot of the moderators have a short temper and a hair trigger on the banning system. All of these people that are getting banned are raising legitimate concerns about fixing the first game, some more so than others. Since Project Cars was crowdfunded, it should be up to the community, especially those who did, you know, funded it, should go on to decide what gets fixed and in what order. Ian Bell, 
doesn't really seem so much to care about it. The Twitter announcement got slammed with replies. They go on forever and ever. The announcement page on Project Car's site got slammed with replies. It also goes on forever and ever. They all say the same thing. People want Slightly Mad Studios to fix Project Cars. It was slammed so bad, in fact, that they put out a Twitter message claiming that there will still be massive updates and so forth on Project Cars, while Project Cars development, you know, Project Cars 2 development will happen simultaneously. This is normal for game developers to work on a sequel while they're soon after their first game to come out. But again, it's how it's being handled and communicated. They don't seem interested in fixing the first one. Now, massive updates with Project Cars? Probably with time. Are they going to hit all the notes that people want them to? Maybe not. But then again, to make a game perfect is near impossible. Content added? Yes, there will be. We've all seen the update schedule that they've put out. Too bad none of them will be retrospectively added to the career even though they will advertise to be. By the way, this Twitter post was also slammed with replies saying more of the same. I've wanted to like this game. I've defended this game. But every time I'm thinking about letting, you know, all this internet bullshit go and just moving on, I keep seeing more nonsense from Slightly Mad Studios. My biggest sticking point is how they're treating anybody with a slightly less than positive view on Project Cars. If you're not on the forum kissing the game's ass, you get banned. And that charge is being led by Ian Bell. And it's just, it's astonishing to me how, in this day and age, companies are allowed to get away with this. Now, the good thing is that people are starting to take notice. Now, Mark my words. You can only pull the same rabbit out of the same hat so many times before people are on to your magic trick. The next car pack that matches up with cars that have a class in the core career mode, whether it be GT3, GT4, LMP1 or 2 or so on and so forth. The next car pack, whether it be the one in August or whatever. The next one that matches up with a core, an existing core class that you put out in a DLC pack, more people are going to ask, why isn't this in the campaign? When am I going to be able to play this car in the campaign? I'd imagine it's going to be met with the same amount of enthusiasm that Ian Bell showed me. The Bentley GT3 car is paid DLC. On disc or not, which is a legitimate concern that people are raising for this game, it is paid DLC. It is advertised being as in the career. It's most certainly not. And the thing about the paid DLC part is that on the PlayStation Network, it's 1.1 meg. Five cars, that's 225 kilobytes each. Whether there's compression or not, well, I kind of don't want to admit it, but something's fishy there. And even more shocking and confusing is that if the Bentley GT3 is in fact on disc DLC, that just only makes it that much more strange that it's not in the campaign. If my first vid was a call to action to have the developers and community fix the game, this video is a call to action. Slightly Mad Studios needs to fix themselves before anything else. It's all about the customer support, Mr. Bell. It's all about the customer support. Now, as it pertains to Project Cars 2, you know, to be perfectly honest, it really does sound awesome. It really does. You know what also sounded really awesome when it was first unveiled? The original Project Cars. And we all know how that's turning out. I was going to get Forza Motorsport 6 regardless of any of this nonsense, and as I keep looking through different comment sections and different forums and Twitter and this and that, people are like, oh, I'm dropping it and I'm going to Forza no matter I was going to get Forza no matter what. I've always been a fan of the Forza series. And I'm going to regardless anyway. The only kind of bummer issue that I have with going to Forza 6 is my current ghetto wheel setup of choice is plagued with one glaring fucking issue which deserves a rant video unto itself, but that's not anything against Project Cars. You see, Slightly Mad Studios is on to something special. They're about 90% of the way. It's the final 10% that led by Ian Bell, they don't seem to care for. As I've heard in the past, and as it's always been said, the last lap is always the hardest. 
I will be playing Project Cars 2 when it comes out. Of course, I'll be getting it from Gamefly. Because Slightly Mad Studios, and more importantly, Ian Bell, will not be getting any more of my money, like I've already said. I can only imagine what would come of this situation if a bigger YouTuber was covering this. It's no shock to me that my last video is getting swept under the rug, and this video probably will too. If a bigger YouTuber was covering this, more people would be talking about it. The mass media, after jizzing over the first Project Cars, kind of hasn't talked about it since. You know, I can only see, like, for example, Jim fucking Sterling's son taking this on just like he did the Slaughtering Grounds and all the other asset flippers on Steam. And the real shock value to me is that Slightly Mad Studios is no asset flipper. You know, it's a real shame. Project Cars shows such great potential, however, with the way that they've been treating it and all the announcements surrounding it with all the bans on the forums, it will be forgotten with time, and in two to three years, when Project Cars 2 comes out, it won't be met with such optimism. Instead, it will be met with cynicism, because, Mr. Bell, the internet never forgets anything. They never do. Ian Bell, I don't have to invent any negativity. You do enough of that on your own. Oh well, too bad, so sad.